Good evening, everybody. It is um, Monday, September 9th, 2019. This is the Wilmette Park District Regular Meeting Board of Park Commissioners. First on our agenda this evening is the roll call. Commissioner Abbott. Here. Commissioner Murdoch. Here. Commissioner Schisler. Here. Commissioner Clark. Here. Commissioner Goebel. Here. Commissioner Anderson. Here. Commissioner Wolf. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is communications and correspondence. I don't believe there were any in the packet. Do any, any commissioners have any correspondence or communications to share? No. Nope. Nope. Hearing none, we'll move along. Uh, recognition, recognition of visitors. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to address us? in the limited crowd. <laughs> All right, no one here to speak with us this evening. Uh, approval of the voucher list. Oh. Sorry, Gordon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the spot. Yes. I move to approve the voucher list in the amount of $2,692,516.85, a copy of which is to be attached to and become a permanent part of the minutes of this meeting. Are there any questions or comments on the voucher? Oh, second. Oh, sorry. Any questions or comments on the voucher list? Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you need us to give you a moment? Just one second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, there was, um, Commissioner Anderson had a few questions that he had asked the director and he responded back, but nope, I see. just okay. making sure. Um, the mower lease purchase, uh, I was asking about that. I didn't realize <coughs> that the it's in two parts, and the second part is really only one third of the total of the second part. So one third really of the total of the second part. Yeah. So that, okay. So like there's three. So one ninth. <laughs> well, not not exactly. <laughs> Steve, why don't you? Uh, you <laughs> three years. <laughs> sure. Later on in the meeting, under um, new business, we have a resolution authorizing the lease purchase agreement. <clears throat> Um, and Commissioner Anderson had asked some questions about this uh, based on the um, information in the director's report that said this, we've already done this lease, but this is for additional pieces of equipment. So we, uh, in the budget, had many pieces of equipment where we were purchasing at no interest and paying in installments over three years. An initial wave of equipment was delivered at the start of the year. We approved the lease related to those items. There were a couple items that we had to wait for their arrival. Those items have come in and this lease re relates to those. So this is for $77,000 a year over the next three years. If we take all the equipment, it's in line with the budget of 180,000. This is a sand pro, a bank mower, and a rough mower. Uh, that's a part of this. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding the voucher list? Hearing none, we have a roll call vote. Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Murdoch? Yes. Commissioner Schisler? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Goebel? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. The voucher list is approved. Thank you. Um, we had kind of moved quickly through this and already had our recognition of visitors, but I don't know if you wanted to address us this evening or just here to observe. <laughs> uh, no, I just uh, Okay, no problem. I just wanted to give you a choice because we kind of are going fairly quickly this evening. <laughs> uh, next on our agenda will be the executive director's report. Thank you. Um, stormwater project has been our big topic over the last several months. As you all know, both you and the Board of Village Trustees approved the memorandum of understanding uh, at prior meetings in August. Uh, the next step is to create the intergovernmental agreement. That's where uh, the terms are uh, very binding as compared to the memorandum of understanding, which was non-binding. Um, we have plans where our legal representation will write the first draft and use as a basis of that first draft the agreement for uh, a similar project at West Park. Uh, reason is similar project between the same two entities. Uh, so we've had some recent agreement around those terms. That does not mean we're just changing the details and, and sending it on. There's a lot more that's going to go into it, but that's just the starting um, draft. We're looking to get uh, the village legal representation that draft by mid-October and ultimately have the intergovernmental agreement uh, in place and approved by both boards by the end of 2019. Uh, the next item in my report is it's officially budget season. 
Uh, we have had discussions at the Financial Planning and Policy Committee over the budgetary guidelines that the staff is to use. At the Golf Committee and the Parks and Rec Committee, we've had some preliminary discussion about capital items, so staff has time to gather information and vet those before they present the budgets to those committees. The committees will review their portions of the budget throughout the month of uh, October primarily with a couple item, couple committees going early November. Mid-November, we have a committee of the whole meeting, which is the seven members of this board, reviewing the capital projects for the district, both next year and then a long-range plan. Um, and then ultimately, we bring the committee of the whole back in December and look at the capital projects along with the entire budget, all the different committees rolled up into one single document. Ultimately, the budget and appropriations ordinance is approved in January at the January board meeting. The tax levy is approved at the December meeting as it needs to be filed by the end of December, something like the last Tuesday or second to last Tuesday of the month. So that is how the budget process works. And then looking forward to your agenda, you have, uh, like we've already discussed, the agreement reg regarding the uh, equipment at the golf course. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the executive director? I just have one sort of following up from Gordon before in terms of the lease purchase agreement. Um, and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the cost to us from a financing perspective was what? Zero. That's what I thought. How can that be? That's great. Mm -hmm. Somebody just had some extra money lying around. They wanted well, to. <laughs> it, was, it, 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 was given, it was given to us as we um, talked to them because we had already started discussions with uh, sales people. They had already told us about this option that, you know, we can work out a three-year no interest. We said, no, that's not how we normally do it. We purchase what we want. Mm -hmm. In discussions with the golf committee last year, there was concern over the infusion of capital versus the operating results. So then we brought back this as an option, and the committee agreed to it. Got it. Very good. Thank you. We were trying to have the golf course not end up with a negative cash flow makes perfect sense year. to me so yep when we told them we weren't going to buy it all they said oh we'll do it on the three years great perfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay any other questions for director wilson hearing none we'll move forward with committee reports lakefront committee please well, it was a pretty quiet month so although we did meet although um we had uh, uh staff reports on the end of a very successful season down at the lakefront um, we are looking forward to the uh, RFPs, the proposals that are due on uh, September 27th. These, these two proposal selection processes, one is for shoreline erosion consultant, and the other one is a consultant uh, planning for phase two. Primarily, we're looking at roads for Gilson Park. Um, staff is looking into various uh, tr uh, minor tweaks to the design, uh, uh, but otherwise it's been considered to be uh, a big success. And we had a um, we had a life scout who is working on his eagle project, who will be uh, installing uh, those you know those life preservers that you can grab and throw uh, because if somebody's out there drowning. He's uh, going to be work, he's working with staff um, to add those down to Gilson Park. And we had a presentation on that, so that was all. Thank you. Any questions for the Lakefront Committee? I had a quick question. Um, I've seen some pictures recently about lakefront erosion at Langdon. Um, any update um, how the bluff is surviving so far and any expectations? Obviously, we can't predict the weather, but October, November are the bad months for erosion, as I understand. Thank you. I direct your question to, to Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. When I was visiting on a weekly basis down there, it, the bluff is still being deteriorated. The waves are really pounding it high. All this extra rain we have has been driving the sand from the top down. Uh, the revetment stones are all exposed now. They're completely exposed, but they're still in place. They haven't moved. They haven't shifted. They haven't dropped in the lake so far. In the little hut that's down there, we're about six, eight feet away. We still have sand uh, there. Um, it would have to do a lot. The, the planting, it's gotten back to the plantings where that's held a lot, but, you know, like I said, the weather, if we get the, 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 um, we keep getting those northeasters coming in, it could take the buff away uh, even further. And I might be worried about those revetment stones falling into the lake. It's not that big of a section where the stone is. It's basically at the end of that road, maybe about 45, 50 feet wide. 
the stones. So, so it doesn't um, go all the way up to the, the, the sheet pilings uh, at the north property line? No. Okay. No. And even the plans that I've seen, they just show it for that area there. Are we into the, the, the clay under the, you know, the bluff clay there on the north end? Is there any sand left there? And there's, there's sand, but, you know, it's, it, Not much. it can be there one day and then it's gone the next and it just, keep, it just keeps rocking back and forth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the Lakefront Committee? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to Parks and Recreation. Parks and Rec met, met earlier this evening. Um, we had an update from the various com committees, starting with the pool. Um, the postseason hours started August 19th. Um, and sizzling September has been going on for the entire month. This is a new program where we have lap swimming available um, to, uh, to folks from 6 to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 Saturday, Sunday, and then some public hours on the weekend as well. Um, we have 124 non-residents and 255 residents using that. We've also been renting the pool to Nutri Aquatics and other groups. So. Um, obviously, this is the first year we've done it, so at the end of the season, we'll take a look um, and see the financial impact. But I personally think it's great that we're utilizing that, uh, that community asset more fully than we have in the past, so I think it's fantastic. Um, ice hockey is starting. Um, TGI Fridays, always a very popular event for our Wilmette youth, is starting on uh, October 18th, and the Spooky Skate is on October 26th. A um, couple of other notes, our soccer program uh, started this past week with 1,017 participants, which is up substantially from last year, um, which is a dramatic improvement over the last couple of years, so very exciting. Our after-school rec program started August 19th, and we've been able to um, accommodate everyone who is interested, either <coughs> with our traditional program or at Centennial. Um, the Centennial program is new to add capacity because we did have such a waiting list. And, uh, but uh, all in all, we were able to accommodate more residents than we have in the past. And Halloween happenings will be October 19th. I would point out a couple of other things that uh, the hoppy hour, this is this Friday at Mallinckrodt uh, from five to seven, food, drinks, and music, come one, come all. And um, this is probably not my area, but given that it's the, uh, um, uh, the Wilmette Foundation, something near and dear to me. I want to remind everybody that the Coneflower Classic is this Friday as well. And uh, um, please join us if you can. That's what I got. Thank you. Any questions for Parks and Rec? Thank you. We'll move along to Golf Operations Committee. Sure. So we met last Tuesday in our regular monthly meeting. And um, as we are continuing the summer season, another very um, good month for golf operations. Uh, the course was available all month, just two days without carts and only a couple of rain events. So uh, budget-wise, we uh, the golf operation is up 10% over last year. It's 5% over what they had committed to. So they had committed to an increase and then have, have beaten that by 5%. Part of that is because of summer programs. Um, there was a new summer, a new program director who began earlier this year, and the work that has been put in for family and, and, uh, and programming has paid off quite a bit. So that's a positive. And then um, events continue. Uh, there was a new event, in addition to a number of golf events, a new event uh, for night golf, which had um, uh, 34 participants. They're looking forward to seeing how they can increase that over time because I know we have an affinity for night golf among the committee members. <laughs> um, and then uh, it, high school golf season is in full swing with Nutrier, Loyola, Evanston, Whitney Young, and Niles West all using the course pretty regularly. Um, and then on a, on a community note, I want to share that um, NSSRA, North Suburban Special Recreation, was looking for a new home for the Gator Golf Program to allow participants to get more practice time on the course and to um, compete more fully in Special Olympics. And this is the second year of the program, and participant Miguel qualified for the state tournament, and we're happy to report he placed first in his division. Wow, wow, yay. Yay. So that's pretty exciting on, uh, on the front. So we're excited to see that program continue to grow and wish Miguel congratulations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions for the Golf Committee? Hearing none, we'll move forward to Financial Planning and Policy Committee. Okay, um, the Financial Planning and Policy Committee met on Monday, August 19th. Uh, three main items in the agenda. One was the budget calendar, which Steve went over very quickly earlier. It's also attached to the meeting minutes of the Financial Planning and Policy Committee that was, you all got copied on earlier. 
Um, the second thing was we talked about the uh, salary increases to include in the budget process for staff. And uh, we kind of came to the recommendation that they use uh, 3% for salaries and to look very hard at medical expenses to see if there's something we can do to slow the rate of increase that we're getting there. Uh, and that's an open item at this point in time. And then the, uh, the, the final thing is we went into closed session, uh, talk about the compensation study that uh, was, was given to us and we've just sort of got a big chunk of it that we've sort of heard about. There's more to come. We'll be kind of looking at that at each of the meetings as we go forward until we kind of get all the way through it. Um, so that was the... Thank you. Any questions for Financial Planning and Policy Committee? I just have one about the, the um, compensation study. So then is the plan then to kind of use that information as we start the budget season next year? Because it, obviously it can't be, and nothing could be implemented now. If, if there are uh, glaring things that should be fixed, then or we should probably get tweaks or things yeah. like that. Well, yeah, tweaks are one thing. There, there, are, there are always things that come out of something like this where they should be fixed sooner rather than later. Okay. So we probably want to have staff put that into the budget for this year. But overall, no, that probably is going to have to wait. Okay. Any questions? I already asked that. <laughs> no questions. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll move along to unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business before the board? Nope. nope. Uh, we'll move along to new business. Under new business, we have a resolution that um, Commissioner Goble, mm -hmm. would you mind? Great. I move to approve resolution 2019-R10, authorizing the lease purchase agreement with PNC Equipment Finance LLC for equipment at Wilmette Golf Club. Second. Okay. Uh, any questions? This is something that um, Director Wilson already spoke about earlier. Um, it's a continuation of a process that we're putting, implementing over three years, the lease plan, but the equipment is coming in now. Any other questions regarding it? May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott. Yes. Commissioner Murdoch. Yes. Commissioner Schisler. Yes. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Goble. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Wolf. Yes. Resolution is approved. Thank you. Um, any other new business before this board? Hearing none, we have on our agenda to adjourn to closed session. Um, may I have a motion for that, please? Make that motion. Uh, move to it's adjourn to closed session to discuss the setting of a price for the sale or lease of property owned by the district in accordance with Section 2C6 of the Open Meetings Act. I'll second. Thank you. Um, again, this is something, there's very few exceptions when we can go into closed session, but this is one of the um, stated reasons that we can. So, um, uh, any questions about this? Um, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Murdoch? Yes. Commissioner Schisler? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Goble? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. We are adjourned to closed session.